classified as a tank destroyer, the M10 enjoyed considerable success in its day. The Vickers was a combination of the Sherman tank's chassis with a 3-inch M7 gun. In theory, it could penetrate Tiger's front armor at a distance of 1 km. Formerly called the 3-inch gun motor carriage M10, it was the most important U.S. tank destroyer of the Second World War, and it combined a reasonable, adequate anti-tank weapon with a turreted platform. In total, from September 1942 to December 1943, the American industry produced 6,700 anti-tank self-propelled guns. The British christened it the Wolverine, but unlike other vehicles such as the M4 Sherman, M5 Stuart, or M7 Priest, the M10 was never assigned a nickname or referred to with one when used by American soldiers. They simply called it a TD beyond its former designation. The M10's design was based on the M4 standardized chassis. Every component of the drive train, complete with bogies with VVSS, road wheels, idlers, and drive progress, return rollers, and tracks, and the internal engagement were kept the same. The M10 had a crew of 5 and a top speed of about 40.2 km per hour. It was powered by a water-cooled 375-horsepower GMC 6046 twin diesel engine with a 620-liter carrying capacity for fuel. The transmission was a 5-speed forward and 1-speed backward tap, while operational range was limited to around 322 kilometers on roadways. Being based on the M4 Sherman, spare parts were generally easy to acquire, and repair was straightforward. American tank destroyer doctrine emphasized speed and gun power over armor. As a result, the M10's armor was thin, which made it vulnerable to most German anti-tank weapons. The thickness of the M10's armor ranged from 20 to 25 mm in the front and size of the hull. The gun manlet, meanwhile, had up to 50 mm of armor, though this was hardly enough to protect against much. In general, the M10's armor was designed to protect against small arms fire and possibly larger caliber fire if the situation required it. The Wolverine mounted a long barrel high velocity 76 mm gun, though to have good armor piercing performance. However, it had less effective high explosive shells for use against enemy infantry, at least compared to the 75mm shells fired by Sherman tanks. While Sherman tanks had three machine guns, the M10 had just mounted one 12.7mm machine gun that could only be fired if the commander exposed himself over the turret. The M10's biggest deficit lay in armor protection the Wolverine had an open top turret, meaning the crew was exposed to shrapnel and small arms fire from above. Its armor was also thinner overall than the Sherman's was. The M10's open top gave the crew a better chance of spotting the enemy tanks first. Usually, the fighter determining the winner of armor engagements. It would rarely be a weakness when only fighting tanks. 
Of course, it could be a problem when engaging enemy infantry and artillery, but that was meant to be the Sherman's job. In general, the open top turret was not seen as a problem since U.S. Army doctrine of use in close support included infantry working alongside the vehicles to counter enemy infantry tactics. In U.S. service, the first engagements came in early 1943 in Tunisia. It did respectively well, earning its space among the American tank destroyers and replacing the earlier M3 half-track conversion. From North Africa, the M10 and its variants served throughout Europe and even to a far lesser degree in the Pacific Theater on Guajalin, Okinawa, and Iwo Jima. However, by middle 1944, their speed was not sufficient anymore, nor the firepower. The 90mm armed M36 Jackson began to supplement tank hunter units, as well as the M18 Hellcat which was designed on a lightweight chassis with brand new suspension and drive train. Another flaw noted in close quarter combat was the slow turning rate of the turret, which was hand cranked. It needed a staggering 2 minutes to rotate a fully 360 degrees. In an effort to upgun the M10, the last 300 examples produced were fitted with a 76mm M1 gun, the same used on 76mm Sherman's and the M18 Hellcat. Armor penetration was improved marginally, though there were relatively few Sherman tanks left to actually fight. In efforts to protect themselves, turret crews also sometimes improvise makeshift turret coverings or are roofs out of scrap metal salvaged from other armor vehicles. During the World War II, the primary user of the M10 tank destroyer was the United States, but many were landlist to the United Kingdom and free French forces. Several dozen were also sent to the Soviet Union. Post-war, the M10 was given as military surplus to several countries, such as Belgium, Denmark, and the Netherlands, through the Mutual Defense Assistance Act, or acquired through other means by countries like Israel and the Republic of China.